distinguished guests from India, uh, the Chief of Staff of the Navy and the Defense Advisor of India and Deputy Defense Advisor of India and all other senior and junior naval officers, army officers, air force officers, police officers and ladies and gentlemen. Let me start my small presentation uh, with giving tribute to this gentleman who is on the screen. He is none other than the first Chief of Defense Staff of India, General Bipin Rawat. We knew from our Sabi time and we did National Defense College course together. He was sitting next to me and but we all know and of course our families are very much connected. But we all know that uh, he had a helicopter crash when he was going to the uh, staff college for a talk and he, he and his wife both died in that. So we can't forget the friends that who rose up with us to the highest office. And this is when I was the CDS and he was not made to CDS at that time, but he was the army chief at that time. And I did the prediction that uh, when you land back in New Delhi, you will be the first CDS of your country. But it is rather unfortunate that he died. So I salute him uh, before I start my presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, today is a very important day for me. But this event kept me out of that. Today is India-Australia World Test Series, the finals. I don't know the scores, that the match must have started by now. And I know that uh, the Indian team led by Rohit Sharma will make the history and make us all proud on this part of the world. And nothing other than we are happy when you thrash the Australians. Because those people, they are our friends, of course, they put Mullidharan saying that he was chucking and almost taken out from our team in 1995 before he went for the World Cup. So we are so happy when the Australians have been thrashed. So we hope that uh, it will happen. Yeah, well, after lunch, I think you require, uh, you know, something uh, delightful. Okay, next slide, please. Indo Sri Lanka relation goes back to the time of immemorial. Now, in Mahabharata and Ramayana, there is a written about an uh, island called Lanka. And uh, we all know the Rama Ravana fight, and then Ravana became victorious, carrying the Sita back to India. And our island was handed over to Vibhishana, the god Vibhishana, who is the son, who is the brother, younger brother of Ravana. Rama didn't want to stay here. He said, this island is yours. And make sure that peace and tranquility is here. So for my Indian friends, if you have time, please visit. There is about 15 kilometers away from here, there is a temple called Kalaniya Temple, where once Buddha has uh, stepped in. There you have the a temple made for Vibhishana, God Vibhishana. 
go and have a look. And then about 550 years before the Jesus Christ was born, there was a kingdom called Singapura in the Orissa, you know, Oriya. And the kingdom name is Singapura. The king was Singabahu. The queen was Singasivali. They had a very troublesome son called Vijaya. So one day the people went to king and said, if you don't get rid of your son, he had a lot of followers also. He had a gang. If you don't get rid of Vijaya, the people will revolt against the king. So the king called his son Vijay and said, take all your supporters, your friends, and made seven ships. We all know that this area was very famous for ancient shipbuilding. Seven ships and asked him to sail somewhere and start a new kingdom. So he sailed and landed in Sri Lanka. And that is how the Singhala race started in island Lanka. Now we all think this is only a story. Next time, to all our Indian friends, also our Sri Lankan friends, when you go to Mumbai, travel a little further in the Maharata, Maharaj Strait and go to a place called Arandabad, where that you have the ancient caves of Ajanta. And go to the cave number 17. And you see the picture which is given here on your screen, painted on the walls of Ajanta Caves, cave number 17. Vijaya's amphibious landing in Sri Lanka. So in our blood, we were seafarers. We came by sea to this island. And our ancestors are in India. And then we all, almost 78% of Sri Lankans, start their day, myself also, worshipping a great Indian teacher. That is, next slide please. Next one. Next one. That is Gautam Buddha. The Buddhism came to Sri Lanka on the maybe about 200 years after the Vijaya's landing during the third Mauryan Emperor, great Emperor Ashoka in the 565 BC. And the Buddha's word was brought by a person called Arahat Mahinda Bhante, his own son. And Mahinda came, Mahinda Bhante came, and he preached, and our king became a Buddhist. What our king, Devanam Pitya said, we had the Posong Poe Day, or the full moon Poe Day, few days back, that is the day that he landed here, the Arahat Mahinda. He said, our king said only one thing. He said, if a great emperor like Ashoka, who dominate the whole India, has converted into a religion. There must be something truth in that. So he converted into Buddhism. From that day, most of our Sri Lankans became Buddhist. And then, we all are grateful to Arahat Mahinda Bhante. He never returned back to India. The today's historian, they say, he was told not to come back. Because Arahat Mahinda Bhante never had the idea of becoming next emperor. He became a disciple of Buddha. But Ashoka emperor was worried. If he come back, there may be a life threat to him in India, because other kings 
may think he may be the next emperor. So he was asked to stay here. So if you have anybody there who want to be safe in India, your children, please send them here. We will look after them. He was here for 60 years and died and buried here. But he made sure that our culture, heritage, the civil engineering, the weapon making, or even uh, making uh, ornaments, the gold ornaments, and then hydro engineering. And then we didn't have proper writing for Sri Lanka or Sinhalese. He introduced, when you have your smartphone, just type Oriya language letters and see how similar they are to Sri Lankan letters all round. So this is the connection that we have from the ancient time. Now all my friends who have come from India, if you visited outside, you say you are from India. And our Sri Lankan people say whether they are Sinhalese, Hindus or Muslims, they say their ancestors came from India. So this is our historical connection, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we come to the next thing. Isla Sideria. I want to show something. That one is the Sigiri, our rock caves, which is being built about uh, 2,500 years ago. And the other side is Ajanta Caves. Now, can you say that the differences, it is the same painting, same school of art, same colors, but they are almost 2,000 miles apart. So this is what the Mahinda Bhante has brought to us. So ladies and gentlemen who are here, it is the time for you to think our relationship with India. Now during recent past, we have so much gratitude to India for two things. I always say two things which are very important. First one, 1,498 Indian Armed Forces personnel paid supreme sacrifice to protect our country. Stop it being divided into two. When you go just near our parliament, where our seat of democracy, next to it is the IPKF, Indian Peacekeeping Forces War Memorial. Every name has been engraved in granite. We Sri Lankans think once you engrave something in granite, it will never be able to wipe it off. A painting you can wipe, but when you engrave in a granite, you can't. So all their names are there. Every Indian dignitary come here, we ensure that he goes there and we pay our respect. So thank you very much for that, for the all armed forces people from present who are there and retired who are here, who has served even during that time, we always salute you. And the second thing, on the 2004 December 26th, on the Boxing Day, when the tsunami struck our shores, we saw what the India, Indian government and Indian people and especially Indian Armed Forces did for us. Their quick response and quick action has saved thousands of miles, uh, thousands of lives. So we can't forget that 
at any time. We Sri Lankans are a very grateful nation. We will never forget the way that the Indian armed forces and Indian government at that time and the Indian people, how they reacted. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our relationship with India. Today, it goes into a different sphere. Today, as defense advisor very rightly said, thousands of Sri Lankans has been trained and been trained in Indian Armed Forces, schools and institutions. I am one of them. I always very proudly say. What that has brought to us? Our basics, as DA very rightly said, my basics as a sub-lieutenant was groomed by the Indian teachers, Indian Armed Forces teachers. And if we have done well to eradicate the terrorism from our country, and if we have worked hard from the commanders down below to bring peace to our country and to the region, the credit should go to the Indian teachers who teach us. We are two nations where that we worship our parents. We say like this, or we touch their food. We worship our teacher, uh, parents. Next to our parents are our teachers. So Indian armed forces and Indian colleges were our teachers. So the connection the Indian armed forces and Sri Lanka armed forces has is something unique. If I say in Sanskrit, it is Guru Shiksha, the teacher and the student. It is above all relationship. For the Indian friends who are here, we will buy from you. Why? Somebody asked, why you are buying from India? Now I have a ship. The bigger ship, Goa shipyard is here. So you should be proud, the Goa shipyard. The bigger ship you have made so far in India, a warship, is given to us on the Indian credit line. So far, Sayurarala is the bigger ship, 103 meters in length. That is the bigger ship that so far that the Indian industry has sold to a, a foreign country. And then, why? I say you go and buy the aircraft from Hindustan Aeronautical Limited. People ask, why? Why? Sayura take only days run from here to go to Karwar Harbour and taken onto the docks on the huge, you know, your synchrona, synchro dock and do the underwater repair. Any aircraft or any helicopter, just fly to Bangalore and get it done. We don't require to keep spares, we don't require to keep uh, uh, technical staff other than the running, day-to-day uh, -day running of the, so these advantage. So please, make sure that advantage you are taking in. Today, Sri Lanka is always happy when the India is doing well in their economy. Because this is economy. Why? When your economy is doing well, you export things. And today, the cheapest way of exporting things is by doing, putting in a container and sending. So 60% of India's transshipment containers come to our Kalambu hub. 60%, my friend. You go and see. Ship after ship coming, taking containers out, put down, and put a container in. 
and out of that, 60% is from India. So that is money for us. Now we all talk about Hambantara Harbour and the Chinese presence. Now we have a car factory here, thanks to Mahindras. And so many car factories are there on the southern Indian coast in Tamil Nadu state. They all send their, you know, small ships, they all send them to Hambantota. You go and see today Hambantota, you can't see all the vehicles. And almost 70% of them are Indian made. And then they put into the major car carriers on the main shipping lane, which is much, much cheaper than exporting on a small ship and sending to Korea or to the eastern side, or to the western side, and also to the African continent. So our location, next slide please. I hope that you all read this book, the Shiva Shankar Menon, the National Security Advisor of India, former, an outstanding diplomat who has been the uh, Ambassador in China, maybe he's the third generation from his mother's side, mother's father, father's father, both were China ambassadors. And then he talked Mandarin very well. He was our high commission also. Then he became the foreign secretary. From foreign secretary, he became the national security advisor. Now he's retired, and he wrote this book, Choices, the Making of India's Foreign Policy. What he said there, don't forget, Sri Lanka is a permanent aircraft carrier sitting in the middle of the Indian Ocean for India. See our location in the Indian Ocean. We are the aircraft carrier in the Indian Ocean for India. And then again, if I go one step away, that we have a state-of-the-art airport, empty airport in Matala. Come and use that. But pay us and buy us oil from us. Because we are also into business now. We require foreign currency today. And similarly, when I left the Navy and CDS, I thought I'm going on into retirement. I'm not going to do anything. I have some land, I'll become a farmer. So for three years, I was enjoying my life and I was put on, I have lost 30 kgs, you don't believe. But I was a special forces man, so reducing weight is not an issue for me. Right? I almost died. Why playing golf in New Orleans? I got wet. I got acute uh, asthma and pneumonia. And I was almost dying, unconscious for four days. And then I lifted to Colombo. And again, another one week in our ICU in Colombo. And then recovered in the uh, Navy hospital. So, the president when he came to know, and then my wife is complaining when that I am not doing anything and eating in the morning and sleeping again, go to the golf course and come back, eat again and sleep, and this man will not live for long, he put me into big trouble. He gave me the Managing Director of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. For last three months, I am the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation MD. That's why you get all these fuel at a very less prices. The prices are going down. It will not go up. Don't worry. And the important thing is this. I was given another job. That is the oil tank farm in Trincomalee. In 1987, we signed an agreement with India that we, 1987, long time ago, 
we will develop this oil tank farm with the Indian assistance and make it very profitable. But we were thinking all this time. But now it is the time not to think but to act. So now that oil tank farm, 61 tanks, when you are in Trincomalee next time, please visit them. That is your place, not my place. IOC and CPC joint venture, we have 51%, IOC has 49%. We are developing the tanks and very soon we will have oil there. And I would say one step away from that, we will have the India's strategic oil reserve in Trincomalee. So for the investors and all these defense people who are here from India, lot of opportunities. I please request you to visit these places and see them. These tanks were made more than 90 years ago, 1930 to 1942. One tank was damaged because the Japanese had a kamikaze attack into one. And other tanks were there. And that also, that we are not using them properly. Made out of two-inch Manchester steel, best steel available at that time. And all the tanks are hand riveted, not welding, hand riveted. We are just keeping that and we are not using them. India re requires these things. Trincomalee is the place, the deepest harbor in this region. So they are the investment. And I will be the happiest to go to Trinco again and my family, because out of my 40 years of career, I think almost 30 years I spent in Trincomalee and around. And that is our home, right? And it's a beautiful place. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to talk more than this. I just want to highlight that the relationship that we have and the opportunities that you have. Today, yesterday we saw a very encouraging story. An Indian cruise liner is coming to our eastern coast and north. We have two monsoons. Northeast monsoon and southwest monsoon. Now it is the southwest monsoon. The sea is rough in this area. But it is flat calm on the eastern coast. So, from Chennai, to Trincomalee, I saw that it is going to Hambantara also. Hambantara will be not a good place in this weather. Because you have to cross the Basas area, which is very rough. No tourists want to, you know, fall seasick when he's on a ship. But other, all other harbors, including KK, they can visit. And then the next monsoon, start from Cochin, come to Colombo and to Gaul. Give 100 kgs of excess baggage so that all Indian friends, we are all from the same breed, no? When we go abroad, we always have at least 15 kgs of excess at the airport. And I know how difficult it was for me when I was the defense attache in New Delhi. All the dignitaries, they think that defense attache have a quota in the Sri Lankan airlines. And my quota is, I, I know Vikas is also going through the same problem with the Indian Airlines. So my quota is that I call the country manager and give him a good drink at least once a month. So when a person go with excess baggage, he somehow push it. Right? Or to put the, to the next passenger who is going light. So, lot of opportunities. Please come. Because... For Indian friends, when you come here, you will not realize you are in a foreign country. This is the most important thing. When you go out from here, you think you are going into Cochino, any southern Indian, you know, city, to the beach. So come and invest. We require money. 
And we are always thankful to your Prime Minister, uh, Sri Narendra Modi, and to the government, Finance Ministry of Finance Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, who was the Defence Minister and now the CDS, and uh, for the support they gave in a very difficult time when we went through during last almost two years. We will never forget that. So there is an opportunity for you. There is a port city. Buy some land there, very cheap. Right? Put your, put your footstep there. Indian footstep was not there in the Colombo Harbour, even 60% of India's containers were transship. But today, thanks to Adani Group, you have your own terminal. So see into these things. Because what you see on the media, don't believe them. Why? Most of the people, when I was a defense attache in New Delhi, the people who write regularly about Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka's India's relation, I used to call them and ask, Dear sir, how are you? Three back full, all these things. And then I ask, When did you last visit Sri Lanka, sir? Oh, I visited in 1972. Huh? I was born in 1962. Yeah, 74 I went, not 72, 74 I went there. You didn't go recently? No. So I used to tell my High Commissioner, get the Indo-Sri Lanka Foundation and get him to come here and see. Seeing is believing. You have seen now the Indian industry. Ask from Mahendras, with the greatest difficulty, with their support, we started a car factory in my own village. I am from there, Matugama, Valipanna. Now see how they are thriving. So similarly here. And then what is the biggest advantage you have? Within no, no time, you will be shifted. The ships are there to send your product to anywhere in the world at the cheapest cost. And then again, this is the time that India is going to start their coastal shipping. Forget about uh, sending things on trucks. Think about coastal shipping. Why? We all learn in the strategic schools, the cheapest means of transportation is by sea. Now, how many of us using that advantage to our advantage? No. Even any product goes from your east coast to west coast, sending by ships is much, much cheaper than sending by a truck or road vehicle or by rail. So, ladies and gentlemen, I again thank Vikas and to the High Commissioner for giving me this time. Uh, to speak to you, I, I was a bit worried because I was given a time slot after lunch. But I think that uh, I was achieved, especially keeping the young officers alert. Right? And then again, please remember this also. There are no free lunches. If you have had your lunch, juniors, you better Listen and ask questions later, if you get a chance. Right. I am not going to talk more than that. And we talk about Hanuman Trail, where the Lord Hanuman visited in Sri Lanka. But how many of you know that we have five major temples, Hindu temples, of God Shiva, God Shiva, in the five different places in Sri Lanka, five corners of Sri Lanka. 
How many of you know? Very less know. So let us next time the Shiva tra trail, God Shiva trail. Let your people to come and come here. Now you go after this session when you get a break at 1700. Go to, we have a very big uh, department store call. You know the name? I should not promote the name here, but you can ask privately. And you see how many Indian tourists are there. Right? So this is our income. You are a huge market above us. 1.4 billion people. We have not tapped that market yet. It's the time for us to tap now. At the same time for you to have your investments here so that it will be easy for you to send them across the globe. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I once again thank for arranging this. And it's a great pleasure to be here. And I can keep on talking and talking. But I think that I have overshoot my time. And uh, thank you for Indian friends who are here. Please do come back and start your businesses here. And we will, as a government and an institution, we will give you the fullest support. The last parting word that we had the Shangri-La dialogue in Singapore a few days back where our Chief of Defense Staff and our National Security Advisor, Mr. Sagala Ratnayak, visited and gave a speech during a session. Please listen to it. It's on the YouTube. And he says, India is a net security provider for us. I'm not saying. It is told by none other than National Security Advisor of Sri Lanka. So as long as you are there, we know in any weather, whether it's calm weather or rough weather, we know you are going to help us. And you can pouch on us that we will be always behind you for anything you want. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.